Okay, um, I am going to start the webinar. And thanks everyone for your patience. I have a new computer and apparently Zoom was not on this new computer. So I just uh, rapidly put it on my desktop. Um, this is the 10th annual BRN School Survey Overview Webinar. And I'm here today with Stephen Wong with the California Board of Registered Nursing. So I just wanna check, can um, people hear me? Mm, not sure about that. Well, let's wait just a second here. All right, so I now see 40 participants. Everyone is muted upon entry. Um, you, can, you should be able to unmute yourself if you would like to speak. Oops. Hi, I'm going to start over again. Um, I uh, want to welcome people to the 10th annual BRN School Survey webinar. This is Liesl Blash with the University of California, San Francisco. I am the research analyst that has coordinated um, this project for a number of years, and I want to apologize for the late start. Um, I just got a new computer, and apparently the new computer did not actually have Zoom on it, so I now have Zoom on it, um, but it took a little bit of time. Let me make sure that I'm admitting everybody um, who is on the screen. All right. So I'm wondering, um, can everybody hear me at this point? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm here today with Stephen Wong, who is an analyst with the California Board of Registered Nursing, um, who has been my partner in working on this study over a number of years. And um, usually every year, you know, I have to give some um, housekeeping tips to uh, get this started. And the really funny thing is that, um, you know, since COVID, the housekeeping tips have gone way down because now everybody really knows how to use um, uh, Zoom, so it's not such a problem. So everyone's muted on entry, but you can unmute yourselves. Uh, the meeting will be recorded and posted on YouTube so that people can go back over it or people who weren't able to attend today can watch it. You know, there's there should be a chat box in the lower screen where you can um, ask questions. You can also unmute yourself and ask questions. And those questions, you know, of course, are either about technical difficulties, accessing the webinar, um, technical difficulties with this survey um, or topic and subject area questions. And we'll try to answer them. If not today, we'll answer them you know, via email or a phone call later. And so most of this should be PowerPoint slides, but I might you know, get ambitious and try to do a little bit of a live demonstration. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over to Stephen Wong to give a little bit of an introduction to the survey and the survey process. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I just wanted to um, see where the single. Okay, we've been conducting the survey for about 23 years. I'm uh, with the uh, BRN, I'm a research data person. And it's basically, um, we've subcontracted out with UCSF to um, do the survey for 2005 and 2006. So we're still doing it. Next slide. Um. You know, we do want to ask, we do ask, try and get, we do ask specific questions, but they're, most of them are consistent. So we do that in order to get um, trends in the data and look at um, the data from various perspectives so we can analyze data and get um, issues that will affect um, the public and, pol public and the schools and we'll give the BRN feedback. So, um, Get this thing in here. Oops. Well, there it is. There it is. Okay. Um, basically, we do we um have feedback from the uh, consultants, MEWAC, and um, deans and directors uh, who volunteer to help us out. And yeah, next slide. Okay, and I just wanted to say quickly that a number of people did help us with a pilot test this year, which was much appreciated and. Uh, a couple of things were identified that uh, were fixed that should make the smooth the survey run a lot smoother for people. So I'm just going to put a thank you out there. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, um, 
it's important to get um, the data accurate. And um, why? Because basically, um, a lot of people use this survey data. I mean, you know, employers use it. Um, the federal government, the Census Bureau uses it. Um, state governments use it also, not just California. The legislature and policymakers use this data for policy development. Um, other nursing agencies uh, besides the BRN and other states use it too. Um, and sometimes we get doctor students who ask for um, data for research purposes. Um, it's basically the best um, data definition has for um, our in schools. So that's why it's important that we get the data right and we get it accurate. Um, we've been trying for the past couple of years to get this data uh, more accurate and get it faster so that we can get the an analysis the analysis report out so that's why we um made the uh co a copy of the survey available on the brn's website um as well as um the um powerpoint because basically all we're tr what we're trying to do is make sure that you guys can have enough time to find out who your designated um, data person is over there in the schools and then you can actually um, down when you download that when you download that survey, you can have that data person um, put it in the data beforehand, so that when Liesl sends out the um, link, then all you have to do is transfer the data from the um, survey to the um, actual um, a survey instrument by link. Um, so, um, that's what we're trying to do. So hopefully we can get this, um, done faster and we can get the reports out quicker. Um, if you can, um, would like to ask, um, if you guys can send us, um, the data person, designated data person, uh, to Lisa and I, so we can, um, follow up if there are questions on the data accuracy or um, issues in data planning. Um, and that would sort of help us um, get the uh, data settled faster. So um, if you have any other um, questions, you know, please e email us. And we're always trying to improve it. So, you know, feedback is welcome. And we'd also like to find, get ideas so that we can, we can get the data more, as accurate as possible. Next slide. Okay, we have the survey time period. It's August 30, August 1st, 2023, July 31st, 2024. Census date um, for census is October 15th, 2024. The drop dead official dead the deadline is November 15th, 2000, 2024. And we do this basically because um, you know, next week is Thanksgiving. So if you can get it to us by then, then you Everybody can enjoy their turkey. Next slide. Okay, okay. so it's over to you, Liesl. Okay, so I'm going to start out, and what I'm going to try to do at this point is actually um, move to a live demonstration. So that's going to take me just a second here, but let me see if I can get to that. Um, all right, it's going to be just a second. And yeah, I may not do that because it's not um, wanting to go there. So let's keep where we are and I'll just go ahead with this. Um, actually, maybe I can get to it just a sec. Oops, here we go. Okay, so I am going to stop this share and then I'm going to share a different screen at this point and I'm gonna to try to do a little bit of a live demonstration. Okay. Um, and I hope that you can see this. This should be the first page of the survey that you receive. And um, just wanted to make sure that people know that there's no username or password. You should have received a link for the survey by now. If you haven't received a link, please write to the both of us and we can make sure you received your link. One of the issues that I come up with every year is that for some schools, they have a really good firewall or something happens where the email that comes directly out of the Qualtrics survey system um, kind of goes somewhere else and they don't receive it. I do try to also send periodic emails via Outlook because of that issue. So I think a lot of people 
a couple of people have written me and said they didn't receive the link and I sent it to them um, just in the last couple of days. So if that's the case for you or some other uh, school that you know of, please let us know right away and I can get them that link. So this is the first page you should receive when you open up the survey, the first page you see, sorry, not receive. And this is the information sheet. And this really serves as your consent to participate in research. And it um, isn't, you know, this isn't pretty scary research in terms of asking you any personal questions. Most of it would be information that somebody could get, say, from a public records request. Um, but we do want to make sure that we um, keep things as confidential as possible. So you'll just find out more about, you know, the survey through this page. Some of you have seen it for years, so you probably <laughs> have it memorized. Um, and then when you're done, you're sure you're going to take part in the survey, you hit next page at the bottom of the page and it should take you to the next page. I did want to note this red writing at the bottom of the page, which is you should be able to exit the survey without completing it, without losing your entered data and go back in using the same link and take it up where you left off. Um, you can click on your unique survey link, as I just noted, and return to the survey. And that should also allow you to sometimes you know, close out of the survey and maybe let someone else fill out another section of it. So when I hit the next page, I'm going to go to this survey, you know, the navigating the survey online section, which gives you some information about how you can move around in the survey and where you can get additional resources. So I'm not going to click on them right now, but up here at the top right, you should see two links. One of them is to definitions used in the survey, and the other one is to technical support. Right now, the technical support is from last year. If we have additional questions that aren't already on there, we'll add them this year. Uh, but that should help some people with some of the questions. It, it answers a lot of the typical or, or you know, usual questions that people come up with. Uh, there's always new questions, however, so we keep adding to it. And I've also included the link to uh, the survey where you can go to, I'm not the survey itself, but the, um, the PDF version of the survey so that you can go and um, download sub segments of that from the BRN's website. And as I think uh, Mr. Wong just noted, we really recommend that you download the PDF version first and see what you can fill out before going to the online survey because the, the online survey is long and can be a little frustrating. So it's good to have your uh, data ready to go in advance and know what you're, um, what to expect. And there are uh, a number of other links down here in survey assistance. And again, we keep putting our contact information here and also contact information um, I think in one of the other pages for our IRB, in case you have any questions about, that's our institutional review board about human subjects issues related to the survey. You can, again, uh, access the definitions page here, the FAQs or the technical assistance down here, same as at the top of the page, and the PDF version of the full survey document by clicking on these different links in this first or the second page. And I'm going to note that the definitions and technical support should appear on every page up here in case you um, don't want to go all the way back to this page. Okay, so one of the first things, of course, you're going to see is this institutional information page. And that page is where you select the name of your university or college. Make sure you get the right name. Uh, occasionally somebody gets the wrong name and I'm trying to figure out like why they suddenly have a program they never had before. And then I realized they just were off by one. If I think I've got everyone this year, um, if I don't, you know, I guess I'll find out. But if I missed somebody, you can go down to the bottom of the list, click other. And at the next page, it'll give you a box to type in, you know, the school that uh, you belong with. And then we'll have that information. And then if we don't have it in our list, we'll add it uh, for next year. Um, as before, we've asked people uh, as, as of last year whether they were a public or private institution. And if you were a private institution, we ask whether you are a for-profit or a non-profit or some other. And here's the really important part of this page is the program type. Sometimes people want to just kind of scroll through the survey and see what's in there. And if you don't put in a program, it just kind of shoots you to the end of the survey um, because this section is really intended to set up the survey so that you get the right questions. You don't have to answer questions for program types that you don't have. So that's why we really want you to look at the PDF so that you can do that scrolling using the PDF and not the online survey. And that occasionally happens and then I have to issue people a new survey link. I'm gonna select just a couple of programs um, for demonstration purposes, but 
Um, so one of the, the key things that I see on this first page that people make mistakes on is they go right past it and then they get shot out of the survey. Um, they confuse um, RN to, a, a post licensure RN to BSN program with a BSN program, or they do something kind of funny with the ADN program, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so, you know, make sure you get the right programs. However, you can correct this and I will show you how to correct this if indeed you make a mistake with your program. So I'm gonna go down here and ne hit next page. And as you'll notice, you're now getting a previous page and a next page button, which should allow you to move back and forth um, through parts of the survey. This isn't the only way to move around, but it is one way. All right, so since I selected ADN as one of my program types, it says, do you admit generic ADN students into your program? So you, most people who have an ADN program are gonna say yes to this. There's only about seven LVN to ADN programs um, LVN to ADN only programs in the state. And, you know, so if you have an LVN to ADN only program, select no. I mean, if you select, if you admit generic students, but you also have uh, admit LVN to ADN students, fine, just hit yes, because, you know, you do admit the generic students. Um, sometimes people make a mistake here. So this is the interesting thing that happens is that, um, well, let me just hit no and show you what happens. So you go to the next page, and here you start out with this full table of contents that tells you the different sections you're going to have to fill out. And I've tried to uh, put the question numbers that correspond to the PDF here. Sometimes I make a mistake because things change over the years, so they may be a little off, but you should get a section for, if you have a pre-licensure program, you should get a section that's sort of a school level section about uh, pre-licensure program information, like faculty information, staffing, et cetera. And then you start to go down here to these program level questions. So in this case, I have an LVN to ADN section. But since I also said that I have a BSN program, I will get questions about the BSN program. And I've cut this up into little pieces, so it's a little easier to navigate around. It's still a little clunky, but it's better than it was in the past. And then finally, since I said that I had an MSN program, it's also going to give me an a post licensure program survey with questions about administration and staffing that we've tried to streamline a little bit. And then finally, at the and then a section on the MSN program itself. And then finally, survey process questionnaires that allow you to give us some feedback, which I do a report on every year and uh, do take very seriously. And then there's a section about submitting survey responses. However, if you went there right now, it wouldn't let you submit any survey responses because uh, you haven't filled anything out really. So I go into this section, let's say, and I say, oh my goodness, I don't have an LVN to ADN only program. What happened here? Uh, I have just an ADN program, a regular old ADN program. Well, that section that I just went through, right, that shows you how to pick your school name and give us some information about program type doesn't appear anywhere on this table of contents. So that's a little confusing, but you can get back to it by just hitting previous page. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I need to do this instead. And I can keep going, you know, all the way back to the beginning of the survey. But let's just say I realized I have an ADN and not an LVN to ADN only program. So when I do that, and I go back to this table of contents, I can now see that I'm getting generic ADN program survey. So, you know, that's corrected. Okay. So this tells me that, you know, I'm ready to go and start my survey. And I'm gonna come in here and go to the general um, pre-licensure uh, program survey. And this section is gonna ask me a number of questions about staffing. And one of the ones that's interesting is if you have an, um, a pre-licensure program and a post-licensure program, you're gonna get a slightly different set of questions than if you have just a pre-licensure program. In fact, you won't be asked this question at all if you have just a pre-licensure program. If you have, um, if your pre and post-licensure programs have the same director, you're gonna say yes here, and you're just gonna fill out the information here in the pre-licensure section, because we don't want you to have to um, do that again in the later section on post-licensure programs. And if, but however, if you have a different director for each, then you are going to have to fill out um, 
the director in each of these sections and you'll get a little note. So right here, if you have a different program director for the pre-licensure program and post-licensure program, fill out the information for the post for the pre-licensure program director below and for the post-licensure program director in the po post-licensure program survey. If I hit yes here, it just says if you have the same program director for both the pre and post-licensure program, fill out the information about that program director below. And again, you will not receive this question if you um, don't have a post-licensure program, it just won't appear. All right, so I'm gonna skip a couple of these questions just uh, to move on. And um, in fact, I'm gonna uh, skip a bunch of these questions. So I'm gonna show you something else here. You had that nice table of contents that appeared at the beginning of the survey. You can get a smaller version of that table of contents by clicking on these three horizontal bars. And um, this sort of highlights that not only is there a different way to get to the table of contents, but there's also a couple of tools to help you figure out how far along you are in the survey. And they're not totally accurate because sometimes people jump around, but you know this uh, pro progression bar here is one way to look at it. It's not real accurate, but it gives you a little bit of an idea of where you are. The other way is to look at your table of contents and it'll tell you like you're 63% of the way through the pre-licensure program survey. Um, and none of the way through all of these other categories that you have to get through. So that should give you some idea and you can you know, condense this by hitting this little bars again. The other thing that you can do to move around and get back to the table of contents is to go to this particular button and it will give you that full table of contents again. So if you wanna see the full table all by itself, you can go to it here. So one thing that I wanted to um, look at here, and let me see if I can get to it quickly without it requiring that I answer too many questions. Yeah, is staffing. So since I said I had both a pre-licensure program and a post-licensure program, it's asking me whether I have, uh, how many pre-licensure only assistant directors I have and how many assistant directors I have that serve both programs. So it's not asking me here anything about post-licensure only assisted directors because that'll be asked in another section. So it's just asking me, do you have any that serve just the pre-licensure program and do you have any that sort of cross-purpose across both programs? So if I say I have one pre-licensure only, um, oh goodness, I'm gonna have to plug in my computer, I'm sorry. Something is going wrong here. Hmm. Should be plugged in, doesn't seem to be working. All right, thank you for your patience. Having a lot of technical problems today. There. Okay, um, so if I say I have just one pre licensure only assistant director and I go to the next page, it's just going to ask me about the hours for that one pre-licensure assistant director. However, if I go back and I say, wait, I have two pre-licensure only assistant directors and I have one assistant director that serves both programs. If I go to the next page now, I am going to see that it's going to ask me for the average weekly hours allotted and the average weekly hours spent for the pre-licensure assistant director number one, for pre-licensure assistant director number two, and also for that one assistant director I had that I said serve both programs. You know, so you might just want to put in, um, you know, how many hours they're allotted, how many they actually spend, and it will, you know, give me a little sum down here, but let's say 20 and 20. And, you know, there you have that section taken care of. It's a little confusing, but uh, it works. And again, any post licensure only assistant directors are going to be um, asked about in the post licensure um, program survey section. We also have some sections about administration and staffing. And again, if you have just a pre licensure program, you are just going to receive uh, questions about the pre-licensure only staff, and you won't receive additional questions about post-licensure staff. So, you know, 
Clar we've got questions about clerical support staff, um, the coordinator staff and retention specialists for uh, pre-licensure programs. And for pre-licensure only clerical support staff, um, let's just say I have two and I don't have any that support both programs. You have to go to the next page. And here it's just a little different. It just wants to know the total number of hours that that, that set of pre-licensure only clerical support staff provide. So if you've got two pre-licensure clerical support staff that work 32 hours a week each, then you're gonna put 64 hours here. So it's a total uh, for them. And I also wanted to note that when we are talking about how many individuals you have that provide pre-licensure clerical support, we're talking about a head count and not an FTE. And then, you know, the, 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 the staffing questions, except for the assistant director question, follow pretty much the same rubric, which is um, how many of them do you have, you know, head count, how many total hours do they provide on a typical week, and then um, how adequate is that staffing for you? Okay, I wanted to um, go from here and maybe look at a question that requires some validation, because this is a topic that comes up that kind of drives people crazy. And I'm going to explain as I do every year that some questions do have validation, but the reason they have validation is that it saves me time from going back and asking you uh, why your numbers don't add up. And last year that happened a lot with the satellite program questions. And it's why the survey reports got out a little bit late because it took me a really long time to kind of uh, square up with people about why the numbers maybe were not adding up the same in every category. And I think it was kind of a pain in the butt for everybody. So I just wanna make sure that um, we don't have to do that too much this time around. And um, you know, part of the reason the satellite program questions are really important is that we are now trying to do regional projections and we wanna make sure that that data is really accurate. So I'm gonna look at my uh, little cheat sheet here and see what question I thought would be uh, really useful for this. And I think it's in here. So here we have um, a section that I'll talk a little bit more about, but um, so let's just say the total number of students that completed my ADN program were a hundred. And I'm gonna skip these other questions and go to the next page. So here it's gonna ask me some demographics um, about the students that I said completed. And I said there were 100 students, right? So it's not gonna let me get away with putting in any fewer than 100 students. And we are um, going to have to pick, you know, a few categories of students here to make this work out. And see, when you go down to the bottom, it says 10. Well, I know I said that there were 100, so you know, I'm going to have to come up with a few more students here um, to make it work. So if I make it add up to 100, it's fine. It's great. I can move ahead. If I go down here and I say, oh, there were 90 female students and, you know, 10 students, 31 to 40 years. And then I'm just going to, oh, and then this question also. And then um, let's just try this first one and see what happens. Okay, so here's what happens. It won't let you move forward. It's very frustrating. And you're like, oh, it's supposed to equal 100. Oh, that's right. I just didn't put in this. And then the second one, you're like, well, I don't know how old the students are. How am I supposed to know? I'm going to have to ask somebody. But I still want to move ahead in the survey, and I need to get stuff done, so I can't just be stuck here. Well, you can put all of them in unknown for now. And just make sure you remember to come back and get them later. But that will help you skip ahead. The other one that it's not letting us move forward for is a question that's asking you for a number of percentages that should add up to 100%. Okay, so, you know, again, um, if I do that, which people sometimes do because they accidentally add an extra zero and I try to move forward, it's going to say, you know, it's got to be 100%. And I'm like, oops, that was 80%. Okay. And the other one, all the others are working at long-term care facilities. Then that should be fine and it should let me move ahead. Oops, but uh, this one I didn't total either, whoops. Okay, uh, there we go. So again, frustrating sometimes, but you can kind of trick it. Like if you don't know uh, where your, your uh, 
graduates ha are employed right now or you need to go get additional information, but you'd like to skip forward in the survey without being blocked like that, just put all of the students in the unknown category and come back and get it later, but just make sure you come back. So we went through the staffing section um, and I wanna go through a couple of other things quickly. I'll go through the, so I wanna talk a little bit about the faculty questions. So I'm gonna go back to my table of content and I'm gonna to go to the pre-licensure faculty information. And here we have some questions about the faculty who teach um, in your program and what kind of students they teach. So we are gonna ask here how many full-time um, active faculty you have that teach pre-licensure students. And they might also teach post-licensure students, that's okay. We just wanna know any that are full-time that teach pre-licensure students. <clears throat> so I've put 10 here, and then it's gonna um, ask me how many of these um, are budgeted positions, et cetera. And again, this is a validated question. It's not gonna let me move forward unless it matches what I just gave. And then it's gonna ask me about part-time. And when I put in part-time, it's then gonna say, well, how many of these are budgeted and how many um, of them are funded by external funding or a combination of the two? So as long as this equals what I just gave up here, we're all good. But now I'm gonna show you, uh, I'd like to show you something that shows up in the post licensure section. Let's see if I can do this. All right, so we're in the post licensure section and it will say how many of your pre licensure active faculty also teach post licensure students, right? So this is a little bit of a different question. Um, you know, it's okay if they primarily teach pre-licensure students, but if they teach any post-licensure students, we wanna know how many they are so we can kind of get an accurate count of how many are teaching just pre-licensure, just post-licensure, um, or teaching both. So let's just say five. And then the next question asks, does your nursing school use any active faculty that teach post-licensure nursing students only? So no pre-licensure nursing students. If you press no, um, you're gonna skip a bunch of questions, but if you have people who only teach post-licensure, please select yes, because then it's going to ask you, um, you know, on October 15, 2024, how many full-time active faculty do you have that teach only post-licensure students? So it's a little tricky, um, but we are trying to get an accurate head count um, between the um, pre-licensure only uh, faculty that teach both uh, pre-licensure and post-licensure and faculty that teach only post-licensure. All right, so I am going to now sort of skip out of this and go to another area that tends to cause some distress every year. And I try to get, I try to go back to people and be real accurate and make sure that we've got the right um, numbers because sometimes um, the way that the survey has traditionally uh, recorded attrition and completion is kind of different than the way uh, a lot of other groups or people do that, and that can be confusing. So um, we are going to look at the attrition and completion questions, which ask you to report on students that were scheduled upon enrollment to complete between August 1st, 2023 and July 31st, 2024. So there's a number of instructions here that you can read that will help you decide like which students go in these boxes. Um, this is the, the section, we have one section for most of these that has generic and accelerated track ADN students, but we don't include in here advanced placement students or readmit, readmitted students. Um, again, students on leave, um, but expected to return are consider, considered still enrolled. And I'm gonna check the chat really quickly. Okay, so there's a number of questions in here and I'm gonna go back to them after I go through some of this, but thank you. So we have um, a first set of boxes, which is the number of students scheduled on admission to complete the program. And it's broken down by race and ethnicity. Um, again, this is 
complicated, but it's been really useful in terms of data. And then down below this, we have, you know, how many students completed the program on schedule, how many withdrew, how many were dismissed, and how many are still enrolled in the program. And these boxes down here, these little red numbers, these should add up to the numbers up here. Now, this is not validated because I can't make this validate um, the way this question is structured. But, you know, we're trying to get, um, if, if this doesn't match this, I may ask you questions later, like maybe if there was a mistake and how this was filled out, but they should add up. And the way that we uh, calculate admission, um, I'm sorry, attrition and completion is that, you know, those scheduled on admission to complete are those that completed, withdrew, dismissed, or are still enrolled. Right, so that's all the students who are scheduled on admission to complete during this window. And the completion rate is those that completed over the number scheduled to complete. And the attrition rate is those that withdrew or were dismissed over the number that was scheduled to complete. Right, so there may be students who are supposed to have graduated during this time period, but they're, they're gonna continue. So they're, they're here. Um, another thing that confuses people, so I made it a totally separate question, is that there may be students from another cohort who are completing now in this time window of August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2024. Those are students from a prior cohort who are now graduating. So they were probably like, say, last year's still enrolled students. Um, so they are in a different category. You know, when you, you report your overall number of completions, um, earlier in the survey, yeah, these students are there, but for the purposes of attrition and completion, they show up down here. And then we have a section for advanced placement students where we ask the same questions again. So again, I'm just gonna reiterate that there is information in the survey itself about how, um, how these are calculated. And so sometimes when I get questions about why it's not coming out this way or that way, it's because we calculate it this way. Um, the other one is that sometimes people will have a student who um, they were supposed to graduate, oh, in fall, um, and they graduate in spring, but it's within this time window. So that student, you know, by our estimations, this if the student graduated within here, even if they were like a semester late or a quarter late, they're still, if they, they're, if they graduated within this time window, we're going to count them as graduating on time or completing on time. Okay, so I wanted to go over a couple of changes this year, and there weren't a lot, like it's, um, we've tried to keep it kind of consistent. One of the things that you will notice, and I don't really have a way of going to it within the live survey, is that um, we took out most of the COVID-19 questions and the answer categories, because, you know, in a wonderful way, I, you know, I've been tracking how well, it started out being quite horrible, you know, and I've got all of these charts and graphs that show this, of how many, like say student placements were lost and all of these other impacts people were having from COVID. And then it just started to taper off until last year. I think we were pretty much back to um, the level we'd been at pre-COVID for most categories. And that was pretty exciting. And it just said to me it was time. And I think, you know, the BRN agreed that it was time to maybe eliminate some of those questions and make the survey a little bit more streamlined. So we're not doing those questions this year. Another thing that did change, however, is that I have actually somewhat expanded the satellite um, questions. And I'm gonna have to do a couple things here to make this work right. So let me uh, do that really quick. So for, I'm just gonna say, let's see, I have a hundred, let's say 90 new student enrollments and Let's see, and then I'm gonna go back out of here and say, okay, we got our completion questions and you'll again see that we have validation. So I'm just gonna do this randomly so I can move ahead. All right, so we ask about, you know, projected student enrollment. So I am gonna say, oh, I think we're gonna have more students this year, but probably fewer this year, so good. And then census data, which is of course, your newly enrolled plus your ongoing students. So I'll say there's 150. Um, and then uh, let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna try to go, and I hope this records now because I haven't hit next page, but usually it does. 
and go to satellite programs. All right, so um, it's gonna ask if I have at least one pre-licensure registered nursing student at a satellite or alternate campus that is located in a different county than your home campus. Right, so if I go here and say yes, it's gonna ask me which campuses I have and I'll just say, oh, I don't know. When, you know, San Mateo or something. Um, so however many of these I put in, it should, it, up to six, it should give me um, some options in the next few pages for these campuses. So it's gonna say to me, look, you had 90 total enrollments. So how many of them were at these different campuses? And if I say, you know, 80 and 10, that's great. It should move me forward. Um, then it said, you have 100 total completions. How many were at which campus? And I'll say 70, 30, and then ask the census. Um, this should actually have the census questions a little off. I think I should change this. I think it should actually say the, oh, well, anyway, I'll fix this later. Um, 100 and let's say 50. And then list the projected new student enrollments for the 2024 to 25 academic year. I said 95, so I'll just say 90 and five. And this says, let's just say 80 and nine. So the reason this is broken out, if anybody remembers last year, it was like a matrix question. You could put them all in one place is that if they're a matrix question, I can't validate. If um, they are laid out like this, then I can validate it. So let's just say I put zero here and it's supposed to equal 89. If I hit next page, it should say, please total them to 89. So um, that's one of the changes that I made. It's really the most substantial change that I made this last year to this survey. Okay, I'm just checking if I have any other um, significant things that I need to mention this year. Um, so I'm going to actually stop the share here and go back to the slideshow. And then I'm going to answer questions. And I'm just going to move us towards the end here. Okay. Um, and actually, let me make sure uh, that this is sharing. So just a sec here. Um, to say share. All right, and we're gonna go here. Okay, so um, let's just say you get to the end of the survey and um, you see that all of your sections are checked. This is what should happen when you get to the end. So you're thinking you're ready to submit the survey. You will, um, when you hit submit or you hit next page, you will get this um, section that's basically, you submitted your survey and it will say, please save your responses by saving this page as a PDF. And I don't know why they don't make this larger, but it's right here that it says download PDF. And sometimes it takes a really long time to download it, but eventually you know, a little thing will pop up here that it's downloaded it. And you'll have a pretty nice copy of your survey. You will also get a copy of your responses in an email, but it's a little bit messy. And um, additionally, if you for some reason can't find the responses or you can't get to your copy of a survey, you can write me and I will download a copy of your survey. Um, the downloads are really messy because they include every survey question, even if it wasn't one you answered. Um, so it's better to get it here, but it's not, you know, irretrievable. There is a copy somewhere. And again, this is where it should show up. And um, the deadline, again, to submit all survey responses is November 15th, 2024 at 11.45 p.m. You will receive an automated email with your survey responses immediately after submitting the survey. And you will receive email reminders and phone calls if you've not completed the survey by um, the beginning of November. So, you know, people will start getting worried and checking in on you. And I will also continue to try to send Outlook emails occasionally to people to make sure that people are getting the necessary information because sometimes, like I said, Qualtrics doesn't um, get through a lot of firewalls or spam filters. And I'm going to turn it over now to um, Stephen Wong to talk about a little bit about what happens with this survey when we get all the data in. Uh, 
Uh, hi, Stephen, are you there? Okay, so if he's not able to do the sound, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay. So there are two statewide pre-licensure reports. There is a in-depth summary and a trend report, um, which, you know, we, it says March, 2025 right now. We probably think more like early summer. So this is a little bit off. Um, I didn't update this. Uh, the historical trend analysis is really interesting, useful and in looking at just what's happened over time. And the data summary takes a deeper dive. There's an online interactive dashboard, which I think people have seen, which takes the place of the regional reports and allows people to filter. Oh, hey, by Liesl? Sorry. Yes. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, found, I found the thing. I'm getting this on my cell phone because my computer had things wrong with it. <laughs> Today um, is data data or computer uh, technical issues day. Okay. You, uh, if you want to continue, I will um, yeah. put myself on mute here. Thanks, Liesl. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we have two pre-licensure reports. We have um, the data summary, the historical trend analysis, um, the report, the um, usual date we send them out is March 2025. Usually we get drafts, we, they, they get revised, and then we um, make sure everything's okay. Um, then they have to go through... Um, several um ada requirements and then they get posted but that's the reason why we we sent out we put the um survey and the webinar uh powerpoints on the website um earlier because um if you have questions on the data or if the data get revised because you know of um, miscommunication then you know we have time to um to correct it and then the reports get out on time um, we also have a, um, where'd that thing go? There it is. We also have a, um, a, um, a, a, a uh, where's the thing? An online interactive dashboard. And that will get up, that will up, uh, get upgraded, um, April, 2025 estimated time. Um, with that, you can use the, you can have your um, colleagues and the public look at the interactive data dashboard to look at data from uh, schools. Again, though, this is confidential data, so it's sort of um, grouped together because basically um, they, they provide confidentiality. Um, what the heck is going on with this darn phone again? Jeez. Okay. What? It's going on. Hey, Lisa, um, I'm sorry. You're going to have to take over. My phone is acting up again. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I know it's been a it's been quite a day. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, the and the interaction dashboard has <laughs> maps and all kinds of interesting stuff you can look at um, and takes the place of the what it used to be like a number of regional reports. The um, we also uh do a posting after I do a number of checkbacks with people about uh, current institutional accreditation, current nursing program accreditation, and attrition and completion rates. And that gets posted on the BRN's website. Um, I think a lot of people are aware of that. Again, we're constantly updating that because people make corrections over time. Um, the post licensure report is, um, and, and then there's another database that we're not really talking about, but you know, the NEC's um, work with you and they have information in there. And that's sometimes how we uh, find that maybe something is incorrect and needs to be updated is through the um, nursing education consultants talking with the uh, program directors and finding that maybe some of the data, um, there's something inaccurate and it's either my mistake or a, or a mistake of someone on your side and we just work together to fix it. And then finally, there's this post licensure report, which happens, you know, sometime in the summer, um, it's gotten more complicated over the years. So it's actually taking longer than it used to take, but that is a breakdown of information about the post licensure programs and um, I'm going to look at a couple of questions now because um, I see that there's some that I should answer right away and others we might need to get back on. So first off, um, someone is asking, the website indicates all schools of nursing must complete the pre-licensure portion of the survey. Uh, does our institution fill out the survey at all if we are not in California for pre-licensure? If yes, do we fill out the pre-licensure, uh, you know, do we fill out the pre-licensure portion? I uh, actually... Um, you should be able to just do the post licensure 
um, it should it should do it should work. Let's see. Okay, question about oh. retention. Um, I'm sorry. Did you want to say something, Stephen? Oh yeah, sorry about that. It's my my phone moved up again. Um, if you have questions on the um the date the uh, database, please send Lisa and I um the questions on the database. There may be some issues with. Tableau, there may be some issues with um, the BRN, the DCA IT. So the sooner you know about this, the better. We know about this, the better. Okay. So yeah. um, back to you, Lisa. Okay. Um, let's see. So question about retention. We don't have two years of retention to report. Should we still enter retention data on one year of data or enter zero until we have two years of data? Um, I mean, you're just reporting retention for that time period, um, which is, I always get it wrong. I think it's like July 1st through August 31st. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So it's like, it's it's only, anyway, however, you know, look at the survey, um, but you only report um, information about what happened for students who are scheduled to complete during that time window. So like, if you don't have any students that are scheduled to complete during that time window, you know, you don't need to report anything. Um, it's only for students who are actually scheduled to complete during that time window. I don't know if that answers the question. Oh, this is a good one. Does the director count as full-time faculty? Um, I'm gonna get back to people on that, but I'm going to assume the director counts as full-time or counts as faculty if they are teaching. Stephen, do you have a, a answer for that? Yeah, um, in general that you, we do count the directors full-time faculty, um, teaching duties, research duties, um, student um, interaction duties. They all count. So um, in general, I would say yes, unless the director is um, totally detached which from the program, which I don't think will happen. So yeah, in general, I would say that the director does count as full-time faculty. Great. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Okay, we are graduating the final cohort of MS and ELM students in spring 2025. I can complete items about continuing student enrollment and graduation, but how to skip the items that ask about programmatic issues like clinical hours? I don't think that it will. Um, I will check on that, whether it will you know, block you from skipping ahead. Um, I think that there were a number of questions where I've actually got it so that it just says, you didn't answer two questions. Are you sure you want to do that? And then you can just say, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm moving ahead. If I will double check that after this to make sure that it's actually working properly, um, but it might not be. So um, I will double check that. I hadn't anticipated that, but I think it should let you move ahead. That's for me to check and get back to you. Okay. We also have a graduate, another question. We also have a graduate FMP program. If we have faculty that teach in the post-licensure program and FNP program, but not the pre-licensure program, would they be a yes to faculty only teaching in post-licensure or no, because they also teach in our graduate program? Um, if they don't teach any, um, if they don't teach any pre-licensure students, then they are, then they are faculty only teaching in post-licensure. Right. So if they don't teach any uh, students that are pre-licensure, then yeah, they do count as um, faculty only teaching in post-licensure. All right, to reconfirm, the survey gets completed each year, even if we are in a re-accreditation year with the BRN. Uh, I think that's a Stephen Wong question. Uh, yes, you do. Um, you know, uh, re-accreditation basically is you know, uh, separate. So as long as you are with the BRN, um, yeah, please do complete the um, the survey. We do need the data, and it's very important to us. Uh, thank you for your question. Back to you, Lisa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah these are great questions. Um, okay, here's another one. We had a class complete the nursing program in fall 2023. Based on the dates, August 1st, 2023, and July 31st, 2024, should this cohort be included in the survey? We are now back on track with our original start date. Um, yeah, I think so. What do you think? Yo, uh, I totally agree, totally agree with you, Lisa. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, great. Okay, someone needed to leave. Thank you. 
Um, based on your slide, current your slide currently showing is the post licensure report not due until June twenty twenty five. No, I mean the post licensure report um, is that just my due date for my report? So that's when I'm <laughs> that's when I'm supposed to get something done with the data that people have submitted <laughs> for this time window. So yeah, I mean. Um, no, you uh, every, both the post pre and post licensure surveys are going to follow that same time window um, from July 2023 through <laughs> August 2024. Um, and uh, yes. I'm going to be trying to get myself to get this done by June. Okay. I'm trying to get my report. <laughs> um, if faculty doesn't teach this semester, do I have to include her? They are on and off and depends on the student census. Uh, that's a good one, too. Um, what do you think, Stephen? Um, if they're on and off, I'm not sure what that on and off means. I mean, I assume they're full-time faculty and tenured. If they're not, then that may change. Um, if you can email Lisa and I with the question after the webinar, uh, we can get more into in depth in it. So uh, let's hold off on that one until we get a um, email from the um, participant, Lizo. Okay, great. Okay, and then uh, when you say first bachelor's degree nursing course, are you asking for both campuses or just the primary campus and question about the secondary campus will come later? Um, we are, if you have a satellite campus, we are um, asking about both campuses. So the first part of the survey will be I mean, we'll be asking for all the campuses combined, and then the satellite program will break that down by satellite location. And I just wanted to note that um, I made uh, some last minute changes to the satellite program, and I'm looking, and the census really should be reporting the census that's actually October 15th, um, 2024. So I'm going to have to change that question, but you'll have reflected back to you the answer that you gave earlier where it does say October 15th, 2024. So I'm not sure where that wording came from, but that was wrong. Um, but I think that most people will understand what it is and I'll go ahead and change the survey. For people who are in the survey, um, I can't change it, but for people who haven't opened the survey yet, it should change. So um, I'll check uh, what happened with that. But um, I had a number of questions in the, um, the satellite area that needed to be sort of checked over at the last minute and I did my best, but uh, things always fall through the cracks. So thanks for your patience on that. Um, are there any more questions at this point? So if not, I'm gonna move ahead. Um, I just wanna thank people for participating and dealing with some of the technical issues we had today. Um, somehow we made it work. Um, this has been an interesting week for me because not only did um, I realized that even though I could access Zoom through the UCSF online function, it wouldn't pull up anything. And then I realized it's not been downloaded on the brand new laptop that I got. And then um, it uh, the charger stopped working in the middle of this. So we've managed to make that work. And then uh, Mr. Wong has had to attend to on his phone due to some computer issues. So there some, some, seems to be something in the air here, um, but we made it work. And if you have additional questions, or if you feel like the answers you got today weren't clear enough, please feel free to email or call um, either of us and we'll do our best to get you answers. And I'm gonna move to the last slide. And uh, I think you probably all have our contact information, but here it is. And also here are some links to where the uh, reports from last year are, where the interactive dashboard is. And you, know, you already have links um, in your survey to uh, technical support of the FAQs and also to the definitions. And you can also find the PDF of the school survey you know, on the BRN's website. And um, I think there's also a PDF of this slideshow. So there were a number of resources available. And if you can't find those also, just feel free to reach us. I make myself pretty much available throughout the survey uh, time window to make sure that people get the information they need to finish the survey. And um, also wanted to acknowledge that today is kind of a um, heavy day for a lot of people. So um, I just want to, you know, say everyone take care of yourself and um, let's hope for peace in this world. Um, I thought a little bit about whether we should do it today, but I think, you know, we went ahead and did it anyway, but I'm um, just going to put that out there. 
Um, so unless there are any questions, I think we can go ahead and uh, close out. Okay, thanks, Lisa. Um, okay, well, um, if you have any questions, just give just um give us a call or email us. Thanks again, Lisa. Okay, thank you.